Welcome to the NNBN Podcast, talking with businesses, charities, and organizations across Northamptonshire. Sponsored by Poppy Design Studio. Find us at poppydesignstudio.com. So we hear a lot about some of the challenges businesses face and employers face when it comes to finding the right staff and uh, keeping staff within their workforce. And today I'm joined by Councillor Fiona Baker, who is the Cabinet Member for Children, Families and Education for West Northamptonshire Council. As we're going to be talking all about some of the challenges that certain people face within Northamptonshire and also a very special business breakfast coming up soon. So my second guest for 2024 is Councillor Fiona Baker, the Cabinet Member for Children, Family and uh, Education. So uh, welcome to the podcast, uh, Councillor. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for taking the time to, to join us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm really pleased to be here. Now, you're a councillor for the West Northamptonshire uh, Unitary Authority, but do you want to explain a little bit about your role and, and what it sort of looks like, and uh, just for anybody that maybe doesn't understand what, what you're actually uh, responsible for? Yes, I'm a, a West Northamptonshire councillor. I'm actually re- representing in the other part of my job the ward of Brackley, which is very down the bottom of the district. So I have to make sure they're mentioned in all sorts of things as I'm doing now. But um, my cabinet role for children, families and education is a role that I've now held for nearly six years, started before we became West North Hans Council. Um, so I have been working in this area for quite a while. It's an area that needs a lot of work um, and we're all working really hard to make a difference and improve our services as best we can. Um, I was probably chosen for this particular role in the Cabinet from um, learned experience of having children with with various issues in my family life and also work that I've done in the past in um, general work before I became a councillor. My role is actually to be like the um, overseer and implementer of all sorts of things that I would like to happen. So how that works is, for example, um, you mention, you will mention later on that we're having a business brunch. I come up with the idea and then somebody else has to put it in place. So that's how it all seems to work, that we all have conversations about what we think would be a good idea. Um, and then we have teams and teams of people in the council who do the day-to-day job. So although um, in children's services, I am what is called the statutory lead member, I don't do the day job and I am not allowed to be operational. So we have to um, have a a bit of a dividing line between operational and overseeing, which is what my role is. But it means I go to a lot of meetings, I chair a lot of meetings and virtually hold people to account for what they're doing. Yeah, The other side of the job is to go out and meet lots of people, tell them about the council, make sure that people are aware of what we are able to do and what we're not. And this is where it's so good to meet you today, because what we do need to realise is that the council are not able to do everything that we want to do in our district. And we need help from other people out there in order to achieve the best outcomes for all our residents. Yeah, brilliant. And I'm glad you mentioned that, because um, that's where we sort of fit in in that that space, really, to help to... To, to you know, make sure people are aware of what's going on, the work that's going on, but also where people can maybe talk to people about what is going on in case they have got concerns or questions and things. So, um, yeah, thank you for, for for mentioning that because uh, we we work with both unitary authorities, the North and the West Councils, to to help share that because it is critical that people do know what's going on, and uh, especially in this day and age where we've got all this technology, this equipment, and these uh, audiences that we can engage to uh, to ensure that people are are um, engaged with so um so your actual role itself um are are you responsible for a lot of the decision making that goes on and then you you say it goes out to the officers to to obviously put into action so yes 
that includes um, the business branch you mentioned. We'll come on to that very shortly, actually, because I'm really looking forward to that. And that's something that we're really behind and are wanting to see people to engage with. But um, how, how have things changed since sort of the, 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 uh, the unit has come in from where it was previously with the county council to where it is today? How, how's your role sort of changed? My role has changed in, in the fact that um, we have a children's trust, which was set up at the outset of all of this change. Um, so it means that although I was very much more um, involved with the social care side of the children's services, now it's kind of one step removed. Um, I do still have the overseeing role and I'm still the legal person for children's services, which makes it a bit awkward when it's one step removed because you feel, you know, I'm responsible for this, but I'm not actually involved with it. So that has been a learning curve to start with. But we now have a really good relationship going forward with our Children's Trust. Um, I'm now calling it our Children's Trust rather than the Children's Trust because it is ours. We pay for half of it as the North pay for the other half and they are looking after our children. So um, that's the biggest change, really. Apart from that, I think it was a, a really, until you actually started doing the job, of working to bring all five councils together, then split them into two, bring services from all sorts of different places and people that in some places didn't want to move to somewhere else, et cetera, et cetera. You can't appreciate how difficult that's going to be. And you kind of Im imagine that this in a year's time, we will have had this sorted. And actually it has taken longer than that to get everything in place. But we're now in a really good position, I think, in West North Hans Council. Yeah, that's good to hear because we have seen a lot of change. We've obviously the industry is coming in, but uh, that's all historic stuff. We're now looking forward into to twenty twenty four and uh, looking forward to seeing what this year brings. And um, the, the the role of obviously the Children's Trust and 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 your portfolio is really important for the future, isn't it? Of the the younger generation and the families that are out there, and especially the education sector as well. Yeah, and um, you know how. Um, yeah, how, what, what, what can we expect to see in 2024 for a start? I suppose is a, uh, you know, a good place to start as well. Well, what we have responsibility for firsthand in, in our council is the education side. Um, and we have a lot of challenges in every area of education with schools, with falling numbers. We've got a, a drop in the birth rate. So that has an impact on how many children are going into school and schools are paid on a head count. So if they haven't got classes full, they don't have as much income. So those are big challenges that we're dealing with. We've also got enormous challenges from our neurodiverse children because the COVID pandemic, although we shouldn't hark back to that in the same way, but it actually highlighted a, a situation where those ch young people who were kept at home and shut away and not able to interact with other young people for such a long period of time has such a damaging effect on them all. And we are still seeing the repercussions of that. And it will take us a long time to get back up to where we'd like to be in that section, which is what we're working towards in what we're talking about this morning, because um, we are talking about our SEND group of young people, which is special educational needs and disabilities, who've really, really struggled during these that last few years of the pandemic with not being able to go out and interact with other young people in the same way as they were used to before. And those starting school that haven't been involved with, you know, lots of playgroups, et cetera, et cetera. So it has been a really big struggle for them. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. And we hear it all over the county from what we do as well, regards uh, you know, trying to engage employers with some of the education sector as well, because um, obviously there is you know, a group of people here that you know, uh, have had an impact from the from the pandemic. Um, and it's good that the, we've got the business branch coming up on was it, it's Friday the 18th, isn't it? We, we, we've got the uh, business branch happening in, um, in Northampton. Yes, that's right. We're really excited about that. Um, well, we're hoping to bring businesses together to learn about um, our special needs children to actually see that um, we have got a lot of young people that are very capable of being in work. But because of the situation that they're in, I think I'm going to say honestly that I think employers are afraid to take them on because they're 
afraid of the unknown. So what we're hoping to do is to bring employers together to show them to greet and meet some of these young people, to give them some support to make sure that they feel that they can cope with any problems which might arise and actually give these young people a really good chance of getting a job. We've got lots of young people with send-in colleges around our district who are really, really capable. I've met many of them myself. But actually the outcomes for, you, for these young people getting into work are so poor, it's a disgrace really. Um, for example, I can just tell you that 4.7% of people with SEND are nationally in work. In West North Hants, 2.5% of people are in work, which is really shocking, isn't it, to think that we have um, probably 20% of our population have a SEND issue of some sort and they are not able to be in work. So we have lots of jobs vacancies in lots of areas and that I know a lot of people that I have young people that I have met would be very capable of doing various jobs we just need to break down the fear that people have of employing people that may be a little different to themselves so what we're hoping to do is to bring businesses together to show them that it's there's no need to be cautious about this they can be involved as much or as little as they like We've got various options available, even just a work experience or supporting a young person with having odd times coming in a half a day work experience, a longer period work experience, apprenticeships, all sorts of options. They don't need need to sort of jump in straight away with the full employment, but we, we just do need to get these young people into work. And just to say that this is my my shout out for this actually started when I saw in the Sunday Times an advert for GCHQ in Cheltenham, which is where I had my business advertising for people with autism to come and work there because they have the brain set that they need to solve puzzles. So I think, well, actually, if they are looking for young people, there must be loads of other jobs in lots of other businesses in our area that mean that young people can be in work, whereas Otherwise, it's a bleak outlook for them for their future. So great to get a bit of an explanation. You mentioned autism there and, uh, you know, people with autism should be seen, I, I feel, as, as, as looking as having a major strength because, um, you know, they, they can play a role and, and, and be an asset to employers. And hopefully that's what this business branch is going to highlight. You know, the yeah. fact that uh, people, you know, just because I wear glasses, without my glasses, I can't see, you know, not that you can see that from from this recording. But uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we all face a challenge somewhere. So why should it stop people from 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 getting employment challenges? I'm looking forward to this business breakfast. We're fully behind it as well, because we want to see as many businesses uh, employers and if they come to this business brunch, which uh, takes place 18th of January. So not long, but um it's no, the, it's um, 18th of January, 10 till 12 at the Museum and Art Gallery. Um, and we are really hoping, we have got quite a, lot, a number of people who've signed up already. Um, and we will be pushing our own business to actually take part because we are one of the biggest employers in West North Ants. So we have a, a diversity of different types of occupation. So we will be bringing our own people forward to actually take part in this as well. We have got some young people working in various areas at the moment, but we have got a lot of people that work for us that we need to encourage to come forward and uh, support this as well. So we hope as many businesses as possible will come and join us at the Art Gallery, Museum and Art Gallery on the 18th of January. Yeah, fantastic. Now, we're going to be pushing this out over the next couple of weeks as well, leading up to the actual event. So do keep an eye on our social media, uh, our NMBN Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, our, our X account as well, and our Instagram as well. Because on there is a QR code where if people are interested to come along, they can scan the QR code and register for a place. But if not, um, you know, do contact us here at NMBN and we can help to uh, to divert uh, or, or send the information over to to you to to actually register for a place because obviously the council are going to be pushing this as well aren't they out on your own communication channels and we're here to help uh sh you know share that message as well so um please do engage with this business brunch and uh and come along and and you say it's at the northampton museum and art gallery so um where, where are we going to be inside the museum do you know 
it's in their big meeting room so we've got plenty of space Fantastic. So we've got plenty of room for everybody to come along. And what we will gain from that meeting is actually we will be outlining the support that we're able to put in place for them. Um, and we will explain our three-year strategy for our SEND group of children and young people to get them to live a, a good life at the end of their education. And we'll be working with all the businesses in the sector to make sure this happens um, and we will be there to support the businesses wherever needed. We will be setting up a hotline for companies to contact us once they've got some young people working in there that they can pick up the phone and contact somebody should they have any problems. But this will all be explained in the meeting and how this is going to work when you come along on the 18th of January. Yeah, brilliant. And um, talking about some of the, the barriers that some of the younger generation face when coming into employment, do you, where, where do you think sort of the main barriers are for them? Do you think it's really around the employer maybe not having the necessary structures in place or the understanding of of people's needs and that? Or where would you say the um, the main barriers are? I think it's all of those things that you say, but I think it's a fear as well of the unknown, isn't it? So I think that's a big barrier that we need to break down because in the past we did have these young people and they did manage to get into work. Um, and we all know people that we think could be on those in those criteria somewhere along the line. Um, and in the past, it's just been accepted. I think now it's highlighted and people have become nervous about how will I cope if someone has a meltdown? Well, it may never happen. So but it, we will be able to give you the skills in order to be able to deal with that if it does. Yeah, I think that's really good to, to help to break down the barrier, actually, that if people are giving those skills and that understanding of what to do. And and I, and I think you're right, it is being in the unknown of, of you know, what what next. None of us really know sometimes what's going to happen. But um, I, I think sometimes employers maybe just don't know, you know, they aren't armed with that necessary information and skill set. So hopefully that will help, um, you know, allay some fears from this, uh, from this brunch as well. So... We had a group of young people helping us when we launched our strategy where we had 800 people come along to um, the Icon Centre in Daventry. And we actually asked the college there if they would like to help us. And they completely took over as an events team. They did everything. They even did the catering. They did the events programme on the day and they spent the entire day running around making sure people like me were in the right place at the right time. They did a fantastic job. And they did interviews to take part. It was run so well by the college that that actually showed us that there is such a lot of um, expertise out there that they could offer to businesses and they would be a real asset, I think, if, you, if they were just given a chance. Yeah, you say expertise. I was going to say untapped talent, I think, is uh, possibly another term as well. So Yeah, no, uh, I was probably struggling there. That's a very good term. Well yeah, done. yeah. <laughs> well, as I say, we hear this quite a bit. And I think, um, yeah, when we hear employers that are struggling to to find staff and things like this, then, you know, there are people that are looking for work and they should give you know, people opportunities and give them an opportunity to, to demonstrate their skill set as well. So, uh, I mean, hopefully this business branch and our drive as well in working with people like yourselves and, and you know, around this topic of, of trying to close some of these gaps that are out there. And, you know, that's what we want to aim for this year. And and um, I, I think it's, it's frustrating when I hear employers say, oh, we can't get the staff or we've got opportunities and people aren't coming forward. And, and yet we have got a pool of people out there that, you know, just need yeah, you just need a, a, a different way of working or something that can be a major asset. Yes, absolutely. And we're really grateful to all the support that you're giving in order to work together with us to make this happen. Because as we've said earlier, without us all working together, it isn't going to happen. But we, we do need to come out of our little silos, don't we, and work together on all sorts of things. And I think this makes a better working together relationship for all of us anyway to be more involved with the council and see what they do and what the challenges are gives you a better understanding of how it works and it gives us a better understanding of the needs of businesses too. So it's a win-win for all of us, I think. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I think is what that uh, just to mention that when you do work with these young people, which I have done now, as I said, they, all, they helped me to run that um, group that we did 
I had such a lot of benefit for myself from actually seeing them in, in action. It was so rewarding for me as well. So I think there is both sides of the story get some reward from it. Yeah, brilliant. We always need to look for a win-win situation in any form of uh, communication, yeah. really, don't we? So, uh, and, and as I said, I, I've worked with people with autism in the past, and they've been very loyal. They've been very, um, you, you know, they're, they're never late. They're, 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 we, we always hear the negatives around autism. Yes. We don't hear about the positives. And yet, people I know that have autism, they're very, as I said, they're providing they're given the right um the right way to work or something that suits them then they can be a major asset and that's the same for anybody you know it doesn't need autism or not you know providing people to get yeah. the right tools they can do the job can't they and also the one thing that most of them have is that they're not that great with change so if you give them the right opportunity in the beginning you will have a loyal workforce for a long time whereas a lot of other people sort of dip in and out and are always looking for somewhere else to move to aren't they i think you might find this workforce wouldn't be like that because once they've been established in in work i think you will, we will find that they're very loyal to the business that they're with yeah, great. I'm glad you mentioned that because loyalty, I think, is key to businesses in this day and age, especially when we've seen a lot of change with, uh, as we were talking about earlier, with the pandemic and coming out of those days and, and how we need to get more stability around the economy locally and nationally. So, you know, hopefully, you know, employers will hear this, they'll see this and, and come to the brunch and then understand more from that about where they could find a more loyal workforce that will stick to the job, providing they're given the right training and education within the workplace. So, um, yeah, let's um, let, let's keep flying this flag for this year, I think, and, and keep banging the drum and, and see what can be done. So I, I suppose another question I've got for you, Councillor, is uh, around uh, the West Northamptonshire SEND partnership putting in place um, changes to actually help, you know, produce or, or uh, produce the future workforce. Um, what I mean, obviously, it's not all down to councils, as we know, but what are West Northamptonshire actually doing about trying to change and, and overcome some of this this challenge that's out there, apart from the business branch? Well, we're, we're doing a lot of work with um, the education side of our young people, because one of the first things which I and others recognised fairly early on is that we do not have enough specialist school places in our area. And this is detrimental to our young people because they end up being sent miles in a taxi or a bus in the mornings out of county to go to school. Um, so we are working really hard on improving that. We're in the process of just going to the planning um, system with our new special school in Tiffield, which will house 250 young people in when it's actually up and running. And we are building a lot more units onto other schools so that... Um, People that need a bit of help in the beginning go to the units and then they can transition into the mainstream school at a future date when their confidence and their expertise has got to the stage where they can manage to cope with the mainstream school, which is the ideal situation for quite a number of our young people that are, have anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. So they can't cope initially. Um, we've got a lot set up for primary schools and we are now looking to have uh, a couple which are going forward now for secondary schools as well. So that they, because that's a big jump from primary to second, the numbers are huge in all of our secondary schools. And it's a, a very daunting task for any young person to actually go from a primary school that maybe had 100 children to go to a secondary school that's got 1,000. It's a big jump. So we are working with all of that to support those young people to get through those barriers in order to get a good education, to come to the stage where they then either go on to one of our colleges, some go to university, um, and they can come out at the end with the skills that they need to live the best life possible for them. Yeah, brilliant. I think uh, you're absolutely right. I remember just thinking when you were saying that about my transition back in, I think it was 1985, I'm showing my age now, but it was a big jump. I just remember going from primary into the secondary school and being around a, a you know a school of 300 pupils, all of a sudden 1,500 pupils. It was a big step, but uh, you yes. know, things are differently these days and um, you know, different people react in different ways and some people thrive and some people you know struggle. And I think it's good to hear that, uh, you know, Actions taking place with the the new school in Tiffield, as you just mentioned, and um, hopefully that will produce the uh, the new workforces uh, as we go forward into the future. 
We, yes, we know we're not there yet, but all these things take time to put in place. But we are actively daily working on improvements to make sure that we are doing a better job than we have done in the past for these young people. Absolutely. And brilliant. part of our working together with businesses and support from people like yours will make a huge difference to us. And we're really grateful for your support in that way. Yeah, no, absolutely brilliant. We're fully behind this, as I said earlier. And um, yeah, we want to see. Uh, you know, employers, uh, you know, looking at all diverse people as well and opportunities to create, you know, the future workforce as well. So um, anything we can do to, to add further strength, further weight through the magazine that we've got, through the website, through our social media output as well, uh, through the podcast as well, anything we can do to help, then, um, you know, please do keep us informed. So um, I suppose um, just to finalise today, um, before I ask how people can find out more information if they want to understand more, but um, what would you say is one final thought that uh, you'd like to leave the listeners with regarding, um, you yeah, regarding where, where we're at with the, um, either the, the business branch or um, what the future looks like? Well, I, I want to just... Im- say again that we'd like all businesses to put forward somebody to come and join us and not to be afraid of of what might happen just to put your toe in the water and actually try it because you will find it exceedingly rewarding but the um the thing to say for leaving is that actually we know we're not there where we want to be but every single day everybody in our business tries their best to make a difference Everybody working at the council is really focused on this. And it's my job to keep everybody positive, even though sometimes we don't get positive results. We always are trying for positive. Um, And I think that we just need to keep on trying to make a difference for the lives of these young people. Because we all know that going through school, going through college and coming out at the other end with a job, is the best way forward for all of these young people because if they leave school and don't have anything to do that's when all sorts of other problems start and that's not what we want for our young people going forward we want them all to lead a good the best life possible brilliant well councillor baker thank you ever so much for joining us today on the podcast um how can people find out more information if they want to make contact directly with some of the work that the council is actually doing is there a way that they can actually uh, engage directly with their department or um with a phone number or something um there there is all of our west north Hants council information is on the website everybody's telephone numbers and email addresses are on there the west north uk website has got everything you need to know my email address is on there if you can't find anyone else i'm very happy and always answer my emails um so you will get an answer if you contact me um but there's lots of other people on there in our education team in our and the work that we're doing for the brunch is on all of our social media so do click on it and join us Brilliant. Well, thanks once again for joining us and uh, best wishes for 2024 and uh, look forward to the business brunch on the uh, 18th of January. Yes, thank you very much indeed for your time today. 